Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review. My name is Stu Harrison and we're here at Mary Pianos just outside of Toronto, Canada in our Oakville showroom. And today we are going to be comparing head to head the Kawai K15 and the Yamaha B1. Both are 44 inch upright pianos from the two Japanese giant manufacturers in the piano space. We're going to be talking about their action, their, their uh, sound, and most importantly we're going to be doing back to back comparisons of their tone. We mic the pianos exactly the same way. Both pianos are approximately the same age. They're both just about a year old or so. Uh, and so this should be a really good objective uh, lined up comparison for you at home. If you are looking at a new instrument in the under $5,000 category, I'm sure one or both of these instruments is already on your radar. So sit back, relax, enjoy the review. We're going to get started right away. So when we're talking about these two instruments, it's very easy to talk about what is the same or at least what's in common between the two instruments. Uh, besides the fact that they're both uh, designed and manufactured by uh, the two, one of the two uh, largest companies in the world, Kawai and Yamaha, both are Japanese manufacturers. Both of these instruments are made in their respective Indonesian factories. So the B1 is an Indonesian built uh, Yamaha upright. The K15 is an Indonesian built Kawai upright. That is a country and a labor force which is increasingly uh, becoming more respected for their piano making and their piano building um, and they're exactly the same height so where exactly are the differences because one thing I can tell you is that the playing experience between the two is quite different what I can't promise is which one you're going to like the, the most ultimately you're going to have to get into a showroom yourself uh, compare these two and find out what uh, is more uh, responsive to your playing style your playing touch um, and I would say uh, undoubtedly that the biggest two differences, which of course is always the big two when you're talking about pianos, is how they feel and how they sound. So let's talk about the action first. Now, uh, the Kawai K15 makes use of Kawai's ABS action. Now, it's not the carbon fiber version, which they named the Millennium 3. So this is an action which goes back to an earlier generation uh, that they had designed. And this would have been available, uh, for example, on a lot of the uh, previous K series, like the K25, the K30. Uh, you saw this on a lot of the BL series and US series. So this is uh, an action which, although it doesn't use the absolute latest in Kawai, Kawai's technology has like more than 30 years of uh, use out in the field, very respected by uh, technicians, lots of great write-ups on uh, some of the benefits, mostly on the mechanical and maintenance side of things uh, that the ABS uses. And in fact, not many people use this, know this, um, but Yamaha actually uses um, an ABS component in their action as well. So it's a material which is proven, but it's also a material which multiple manufacturers, including Yamaha and Kawai, are both making use out of. So what does this mean for the playing experience? Well out of the box these are the two differences I notice between these two instruments both on the Kawai K15 as well as the Yamaha B1. The increased use of the ABS in the Kawai and the fact that in my impression Kawai is spending a little bit more time on factory prep on the K15 than Yamaha is on the B1 the action out of the box feels more fluid and it feels like there's less mechanical resistance to the instrument. And so I do find that the repetition speed uh, and then just generally the sense of fluidity that you have on the action uh, is, is just a little bit more. Uh, again, this is out of the box. It's hard to say what uh, the B1 would be capable of uh, if you were to spend say three or four hours or five hours with a really great uh, technician concert level or, or, or just an experienced technician who could maybe ease that action a little bit and uh, reduce some of the stiffness. But I also think there's a, a geometry difference uh, in those two actions. And I think Yamaha is going for uh, you know, a very uh, easy uh, to control sort of one size fits all Whereas the Kawai, I think, is going for uh, something where the control and the lower dynamic ranges is, is excellent um, and the repetition speed is excellent. So there's just some different priorities, I think, in what the two companies are trying to deliver uh, through the actions. And of course, 
uh, the increased uh, amount of wood content in the B1's action uh, simply means that it's a slightly heavier mechanism, so that it is going to require a little more energy to activate, and there's a chance that in a, in a climate where you've got a wider variation of humidity, perhaps that B1 action is going to require a little bit more regulating over time. But generally speaking, both actions are mechanically quite sound. It's just, as I said, when you get them both out of the box, the K15 just is going to feel a little more fluid um, than the B1. Other big differences between these instruments, you actually can't see on the inside or from the front, they're on the back of the piano. And that comes in the form of back posts and soundboard. So the Kawai K15 is equipped with two back posts, plus the two on the very end, so I guess some people would say that's four back posts, as well as a solid spruce soundboard. And so what does this translate into? Well, the back posts on an upright piano are going to do a few things. Uh, manufacturers will claim that this increases the rigidity of the overall instrument, and so that uh, increases the tuning stability, especially if the instrument's going to be moved, or, or you know, just how well it stands up to a bit of climate climatic change over time, um, but musically speaking what back posts normally do is it increases the amount of energy that can sort of flow through the overall structure. So the more back posts, so the theory goes, it, the more the energy overall is able to resonate through the whole body of the piano, and so you actually get more sympathetic resonance. So you're not just hearing the soundboard, but you're actually starting to hear parts of the, uh, the piano, uh, structural piano, uh, start to resonate and create piano tone. Um, the solid spruce soundboard, however, I would say probably has the biggest impact in terms of the tonal difference between these two instruments. And this is something that is a little hard to pick up on unless you have a side-by-side -side comparison like we do right now. And as I said, in just a minute or two within this video, we're actually going to give you an opportunity to hear side-by-side -side exactly what we're talking about. And so this comes down to physics. Um, a laminated soundboard or a surface tension soundboard is excellent for a few things. It is excellent for tuning stability and it is excellent for longevity because the chances of that soundboard cracking are literally zero uh, and the level of how much it's going to sort of swell and shrink depending on the humidity level again is dramatically reduced because you're layering um, wood uh, and you're sort of um, crossing the direction in which the wood grain is and so you create this very uh, strong, very resistant structure that isn't going to change very much when the temperature or the humidity goes up. Musically speaking, it has some drawbacks. And the drawbacks are, of course, when you're adding that glue and you're adding all of that extra tension, you're actually increasing the amount of energy that you need to put into that soundboard for it to start resonating. So in other words, in order to get some really great tone, out of a piano with a surface tension soundboard, like the B1, you actually have to put more in before the piano kind of comes alive. Um, so below a certain dynamic range, really all you're hearing is a little bit of the soundboard, some string tone, um, and very little sympathetic resonance through the rest of the instrument. On the Kawai, at a lower dynamic range, because it's using that solid spruce soundboard, you have to put less energy in before that soundboard really becomes active. And so this, to me, is the number one difference between those two instruments, is how active the soundboard or how active the instrument becomes, tonally speaking, at a lower dynamic range. And so what does that translate into? Because I know that was a whole bunch of fairly technical uh, discussion on the soundboard. Well, what it means to a parent is that you're going to be able to have an instrument like a K15 possibly take your son or daughter further along the musical spectrum before uh, they need to upgrade something. Because the more responsive and the wider the, the, res the dynamic range of an instrument, um, the more they're going to be able to grow and develop their muscle control and develop their ear. Uh, and so there is a chance, of course, every situation is a little bit different, but I would say generally speaking, any piano with a solid spruce soundboard compared to a surface tension soundboard, all other things equal, is going to allow somebody to just expand their musical horizons a little bit more because of that increase in the dynamic range uh, that you get from, uh, from the solid spruce. So that uh, pretty much concludes what I would assess as sort of the major similarities and differences uh, between those two instruments. Virtually the same price point, same, in, uh, same country of manufacture, same height, 
two extremely respected companies building these instruments. But again, main differences are uh, the feel of the action, a little more fluid versus a little more stiff out of the box. And then of course, we've got back posts versus no back posts and a solid spruce soundboard versus the surface tension soundboard. So let's hear what they sound like back to back. So we're going to listen to them back to back now and it's important for people to know at home that we are miking these instruments in exactly the same way. We're going to use an AKG C414 microphone which is a very well known, very popular studio grade microphone. It's going to be placed exactly the same place on both pianos and we are not using any compression, any EQ or any other effecting whatsoever. You're going to be hearing at home exactly what we are hearing uh, here in the showroom or at least as close as possible uh, with the same microphone so that you at home are getting a true comparison. <laughs> 